Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number five, targeting the E minor chord. Wait, hold on a second. My producer wants to run a test for some reason. Okay, Phil, I'm ready for your test. What, you want to test me by having me count to four out loud? What, what are you saying, Phil? You, you don't think I could count to four? You don't think, I'm an accountant, Phil. I know how to count to four. I, I could count by fours if I wanted to, at least up to like 40, if I could use my fingers, count to four. You know, why, why don't you say your ABCs out loud, Phil, but you can't use like the song tune to help you. How about that test? How about that test? Whatever. I don't have anything to prove to you about my counting skills, Phil. I don't have anything to prove. Do you hear me? Do you hear me, Phil? Is this microphone even working? Testing, one, two, three, four, testing. Phil! What, what's that, Phil? You have what you need now? Well, that's good. That's real good. Because I'm getting sick and tired of your rules. Yeah, that's real good, Law Dog, because Law just don't go around here. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Anyways, on to the fretboard. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but did so in prior presentations. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you could begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the chords, the scale that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's a bunch of tabs down below got all these green example tabs the yellow example tabs and the og orange tab the og orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section mapping out the entire fretboard giving us our entire musical alphabet in letter format in number format and combining letter and number format providing a key that can be adjusted with this green cell adjusting the worksheets on the right hand side to the key that we selected providing the notes in that scale the chord constructions in the scale interval information and more we then wanted to look at the key of c starting with the chord constructions in open position which are now represented by the yellow tabs down below starting with the c chord in frets one through three we mapped it out discussed it in detail then we went to the four chord because it's also a major chord construction f major then to g major the five chord then back up to the minors d minor and then we went to uh, e minor and then a minor and then b uh, diminished we then wanted to jump from the uh, end of the the guitar open position to the middle of the guitar discussing it not necessarily in uh, in chords, but rather in scale. So now we're jumping to fret five. We talked about it in overview because we already have this part of the guitar mapped out. We're now jumping to the middle of the guitar, but we're learning it from a different angle this time with our uh, scale constructions. So then we talked about the scale constructions and we tried to tie it into what we learned in open position uh, targeting the C major chord in our new scale position over here. And then we went to the F, same thing with the F. And now we're going to be going to, uh, well, then we did the G and then we went to the D minor and did that. And now we're going to the E minor. So that's going to be our process. This time we have our open position kind of mapped up over here. We're going to still look at the same construction for our scale on the right hand side but now be targeting this E minor. So I'm gonna pull over what we did last time. So just so if you're following along, you can change your worksheet as we go. So we left off last time on this tab, uh, fret five, I'm gonna hold down control and drag that to the right. And then I'm gonna double click here and I'm gonna say this is gonna go from a D to an E minor, E minor. And I'll just say this is the practiced. So it's a different tab label. And then I'm gonna make that blue just to show that we're practicing on that one. There's the blue. Okay, so this, this is what we had last time. So then I'm gonna modify this worksheet, moving it from the D minor to the E minor. So let's move all these down. These need to be removed, 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 removed. Why are there so many of them? Do you really need that many? Okay, and then I'm gonna select the whole thing 
and I'm going to adjust the rules on these green, red, and yellow to down, go down to this one. Let's bring that down first so we can see what we're doing. And then home tab. Uh, well, then I got to select these again. And then home tab, uh, conditional formatting. Let's go to the rules. These are our rules. We're going to then go into the, the double click on the green one. Change the cell to the E. Okay. It's not recorded yet. It hasn't done the change yet, but it'll do that when we hit a OK again. Let's go to the red one. Change this cell to the G. OK. And then the yellow one, I'm going to change this cell to, not that one, to the B. That's what it was before. And then now I'm going to say OK, and it should adjust this over here. Boom. So I think it did it. So then all the E's are green. I'm going to go up top, format, paint this over here. So there's our E, and then here's our G, format paint that here, and then here's our B, format paint that here, and then I'm just going to format paint the white ones onto this one, and there is our point of focus. Now when we look at the uh, E minor in open position, we could say, okay, what do we, how do we play that? We go boom, we go boom. And it's a nice, easy thing to play because we just put those two fingers there and everything else is barred off by the nut. So we're going to say dut dut from here, here, and then this one, uh, this one there, dut, and then this one, so let's put that here, and then this one is here. So there's our nice E minor shape that we saw in open position over here on the yellow tabs and so then we're going to be thinking about where we can play that over here so we can first target the e's i could say okay well there's an e there and there's an e there now remember as we do this we're still playing in basically the key of c as though we constructed this from the key of c i'm going to hit the drop down here and let's say i'm going to go full well before i do that we're still, we're still thinking of ourselves as playing in the key of C because we modify, we created the whole fretboard from the notes in the key of C of which the three chord was constructed, which ended up to be these three notes, which results in an E minor. So we could then center around the C chord and play in the key of C and then pull in an E minor, or we can try to center around the, the three chord here while still being in the key of C, or we could switch entirely to an E minor scale. But we're not going to switch to the E minor scale here. We're going to still focus on our same shape. And so let's hide some cells up top to look at the relative uh, mode. So I'm going to go to the mode over here. There's the Dorian. And so now we're on the Phrygian. So let's right click and hide. So there's the relative uh, minor mode. So I'm going to copy this over here so we can think of ourselves as playing in the relative minor. I'm going to take these and put them here. So if we're trying to say that we still have all the notes in the key of C, but we're trying to make the uh, E minor the center point, we can think of it as the three note. Or I can say I'm basically in Phrygian and try to make that my central point and, and say it's going to be the one, however you want to look at it. So let's just think about that a little bit more just to get that straight. So if I'm in, so all these notes are in the key of C. So if I was to make the C the center, I could start with a C. That's how I'd, the easiest way to do it, start with a C, F, maybe go to the E minor back to the C. So C should sound kind of like home because I'm hovering around it. If I want to make that E minor home, even though I'm using all the chords constructed from the key of C, then I can think about just playing around that three chord, or I can think of myself as just converting it to the one chord, which means we would be in a Phrygian, however you want to see it. But we're just going to say, okay, I'm going to use all the same chords, starting with an E, Maybe go to a C, A minor, back to an E, G, E. And I'm just trying to hover around that E to try to make that, that E minor the central point. That's what we're mainly going to do here because we want to still be practicing these same shapes that were constructed in the key of C, but focus on 
the, the chord that we're playing, which is going to be the E minor. So uh, once we have that, then the question is, well, how can I basically be strumming around here and pull in some stuff from my pentatonic shape on the right hand side? Let's move this up. I'm going to hide. I'm going to go to full screen mode. So how can we pull some of this stuff in uh, to our shape, which is up top in fret number five? Quick recap of this whole mess up top. What is this mess here? This, you can think of it as we started out with the major, all the major notes on the bottom, which are blue. So those are on the bottom and they're blue. <laughs> and then we put on top of that, the, the pentatonic shape in green. So we layered the pentatonic shape on top, which will fit exactly in the major shape because it's only five out of the seven notes. And then on top of that, we put the three chord or the E minor notes, the E, the G's and the B's and put them on top. But note that when we think about that pentatonic shape, it's only we think about it as being related to the one and the six, the major and the relative minor. So the other chord constructions may not fit perfectly into the pentatonic because they were constructed from seven notes, not five notes. And the note that doesn't fit in here is clearly that B, right? So the B doesn't fit in. It's the seven, so you might not be using it, you know, all the time anyways. But, but if you're switching from a C to an E minor, there's a couple ways that you could deal with that. If you're looking at this in terms of your pentatonic shape, and you're saying, now I'm going to this E, then you might see in your mind that, hey, that B right there is outside of my pentatonic shape. And you might just target that. That's one way that people often think. They love, you know, the pentatonic shape is great. And so you could think about yourself as a pentatonic shape player, basically. But then I'm going to start targeting these notes. And I'm just going to adjust my pentatonic shape to pick up the notes that I'm targeting. Or you can think of yourself as basically playing in the key of the major key. In which case, of course, all these notes will be included because we constructed all these chords from, in essence, the major key C major, which is the same as its relative uh, Phrygian mode. So uh, that's the general that's the general idea. So then the question is, well, if if I'm strumming around uh, in an E over here, I'm going to basically try to follow one of these fingers in, and the first thing I would try to do is possibly target either this E, which is up here, or this E that's down here. This one's probably easier to end off on because it's got that low bass note if you're just kind of playing by yourself. So you might play something like an E. And then this finger is pretty good to basically follow in here because it's going to naturally go up to this A if you follow it into your position. So that E right there could naturally go up to this A. And then you're, and then you're in my four my four finger pentatonic position and then of course we can noodle around and maybe end so all i did was go you know boom 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 and then been, and went back on my e so i'm just trying to i'm just trying to give myself freedom but give myself like a target at the same point at the same time right so i'm just saying i'm gonna be just jamming here and i'm just gonna follow that in and then i'm gonna do whatever i want but I'm going to end on that E. So I've, all I've, I've done for myself is give myself kind of some boundaries and then kind of freedom in the middle is, is basically how you, one way you might want to think about it if you're just trying to ex expand your fretboard playing around here. And then we could say, okay, let's cut this and put it on. Oh, what did I do? Control Z, Control Z. Okay, copy this, copy that. So then if you're targeting this one, you, you know, you could do the same thing. You play your E here. And then, st you know, I'm going to end it basically right here. So then I just knew, did I just walked back up here and then I ended it basically uh, right there. So that's, of course, the first thing you can do. You could, you don't have to follow this finger in. You can follow any finger in. If you follow this finger in, then it doesn't quite set you perfectly because your fingers are a little bit off. But it's, you could just make that one switch so you can follow this, you know, this finger in. I usually play my E, by the way, like this. 
because that's because I go from an E major to a minor. You might play your E like this, and you might switch your finger in a little bit if you wanted to, just to see what you wanted to do. So if I switch my finger in like this, all right, you might do that, or you might be playing your E like this, which is kind of a shortcut E. I'm kind of muting everything down below, but I'm getting the heart of the E up top. I'm playing these two in, that, in the top string, and then I can easily just follow this string in. Kind of fun to do because then you've got this bass string. What one of the great things about the E minor, like I say, I, I like the minors are really fun with the guitar that are constructed in the C major because, and the minors are going to be the D, the E, and the A because you have this E, A, and D as open strings. So if you play the E like this and you just kind of, you can you can just keep hitting that E string and just it's always ringing out. I'm just following it in until I get to the double stop E uh, basically up top here. So you could just follow this finger in, which is one finger, <laughs> and just and just follow it back and forth, which is kind of fun uh, to do. So there's uh, the general E. Now the next thing, of course, uh, no, you could pick up your fingers too. So if I was going here, and I pick up my fingers and jump over here, you could do that instead of following a finger in. But when people do that, you're usually going to go and then jump over here and always do the same thing, right? Because you're going to start the pentatonic from top to bottom because that's how people learn the pentatonic. So what you want, if no matter what you're doing, if you jump in here, you still kind of want to start somewhere else from time to time. So you're learning the pentatonic up and down in a way that's more fun, a little bit more musical, although just playing it up and down like that, you know, everybody does that, so so that's fine to do. But when you're kind of messing around here, you want to jump and say, can I play just like that middle bit? Right, and then when you're jumping in. Okay, so the next thing would be, uh, can, we, can we construct a chord from this thing, right? So let's do it with the yellows this time. I have a lot of yellows over here. So if I made a chord, you're gonna say, okay, well, there's the E, and then back here, we've got the third. That, by the way, is a is a, a position that we wanna start to memorize, right? The third front, when I'm looking at a major, would be down and back one. Now it's down and back two to get to the third for the minor, because it's it's been flattened. And then there's a B, well, that's the other color. I want this color. And then here is a, a B. So now we've got our, our one, a three, a five, and another five here. Now that shape might look funny because you're like, okay, well, that doesn't, I don't really recognize that because if I, if I was going to say, for, usually, if I was going to say, here's my E, how would people play the minor? They would go forward on it and they'd say, well, that's my second string down E, so I'm going to play a bar chord going this way. And you could totally do that, but that's outside of our shape, or mainly outside of our our shape here. So we can also extend it backwards, which is, is useful to see. So one way you might see this, if we look at this from a cage thing, and the cage thing is less common for the, for the minors, you don't hear it explained as much, but you could do the same thing basically, you know, with the minors. So for example, if I took this C shape, which is over here, uh, or let, let's start with I'm on I'm playing uh, I'm playing an E. So if I took you know my E shape over here, here's my E shape that we started with. And if I was doing the caged, we, we'd say the next one would be a D, right? So the D shape in open position uh, was duh, 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 here. So here's our D shape when we're looking at a minor D shape. This was a minor E minor D shape. Now, if I move that D shape up, I'm following this finger, which is my, which is my root note, to the point where I get an E. So, boom, right there. So that's why you get that kind of D shape that's moved up. Same kind of caged uh, system, but now it's an E minor. Now, really, to get that full thing, you'd have to play it like this, and then uh, and and hit this chord up top. Because remember, when we play the D here, the D minor this D is ringing out.
But most of the time, that's hard to get to. It's it's easy just to play this three strings, which still gives you everything you need. And that, if you pull that up to the E, it's right there. So so this one, this shape is also kind of inside where we're playing right now. So in other words, uh, if I go here, that's going to be this uh, shape. It's a little bit outside. And this is why the the miners, people often don't focus on them as much, even though the cage system still kind of works because they don't fit neatly into the chunks that we've constructed out f from based on the major chunks, right? Because now this thing is kind of going over my two, my two positions. So I can't really name this position like a, a D minor position. <laughs> and after the D under the cage system, you would go back to a C. So then now this shape, when we think about a C minor, that isn't something that we learn usually as our first few shapes when we're in open position. So that's another reason why you might not hear the cage system as much on the minors. But if we think about it over here, if I go back to the C, just to see how this is constructed, here is our C shape. Here's the third. And one way you can think about constructing the third is to, is to flatten it. So if I was to flatten that third, if I was to bring that back, I'd have to switch those two fingers and it would look like that, right? So that's one way you can get to your minors. You can take your major and basically flatten the third. And that's basically what we have over here. So if you look at this shape, then you're saying, okay, well, what is this? Well, if it was a, a C major, it would be going here, here, and then you'd see it uh, going down to here, right? If I had this shape that was going up here, I'd have uh, my E and then uh, my G sharp, and then I would typically be fingering another E down here. Th those were at least would be where my fingers are going. But the point is that this is now being flattened to here because it's a minor. So now we ha we'd have to flatten this and we get that funny shape like that, which you're probably not going to play it that way. But I just want to point that out just so you can see, you know, how these, the, 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 sim the symmetry of the shapes that are going up the neck. Now, the other useful way to kind of see it is just to say, okay, well, if that is my one, the third is generally going to be down one and back two if it's a, if it's going to be a major third. So you, and that's just good to note just from a, from like, if you just play those two notes, then you're going to get a good feel of the E minor because you're picking up the one and the one that's going to be distinguishing it from a major, the third. And then the fifth is, is always going to be back another one. So there's going to be your shape. So this, this shape right here, I can, de I can undo these two or take those off. That shape, although you might not play that shape all the time because it's kind of a reach to play, it's useful to see. So if I was going this way from the E, if I was pivoting this way on that string, I get to my bar chord. That's what everybody's going to play when they see that. But you also want to see it going back the other way, which is in our position here, so that you can at least arpeggiate that and you can play kind of the root and the third over here pretty easily uh, as well. Okay, so the next thing, the next way we might play this is you could say, and this is a, a really useful way to play it, one of the way I play it a lot is to say, well, if that's the root, then above it, you're going to have the fifth. And this also, you can also see this is linked to the C shape over here, because if this was the C shape, right, uh, like this, sometimes we can pick up that G. So a lot of people will play that like this. Now, you can't really convert that to the minor because I can't like reach over here and, or it's hard to do. But, it, but what I can do is I can say, okay, well, if that's the major, if I shift this finger down to the minor, I end up with this. Right, instead of this being the major, I switch it down to the minor, which would be that. So it's still connected to, you can see how it's kind of connected to that C major shape if you want, if that's helpful. But we get that up here then. So now we can pick up, this is the root. And then above it is the fifth. And then down below you have the third. So it's a really kind of heavy on the low string, but it's a pretty easy thing to play. I can mute the string below it quite easily with the meat uh, of this finger so we can play it uh, that way and so then uh, then we have the E now you can also play it this way and this way is kind of inverted so now you've got your E down here and again most of the times 
when you see the E, most people are going to say, if you're going to construct something from it, they're going to try to pull the fifth over here. And I do that too, right? You're going to pull the fifth, which is down here. So that's like a power chord. But you also kind of want to think, well, what if I went reverse backwards the other way? In this case, I can, I can build the fifth, which is not directly above it in this case, because we're in the kink. So it's back one instead of up here when it was directly above it. And then we've got uh, the third, which is which is up one from the fifth and and one up. So that's a pretty nice shape. It's going to give you a different feel because it's inverted, meaning the the, the root is the highest note uh, in the in the thing that you are playing when you uh, string it that way. So I'm going to go back up top and just say then of course then you can practice going back and forth from your E over here and then that's your heavy E right and then follow this in or something and then I would end it on this one is a is a fun one to or pretty easy finger into practice with if you're trying to get a E over here and that allows you to kind of stay in this position as well and just use that as your ending spot and then I can follow this finger back and just keep on playing this one, which is kind of fun to do. Right, and then I, so I can always just keep on playing that that low E when I'm kind of noodling around. If you want that higher sound, you could start to you could target this one, so you could be bringing this one in. There's my E played this one. That's kind of interesting because you can pull it back from this C, right? And that sets you up for that for that chord uh, right there. You can also play around on pivoting around this E. So, so there's just the, the root and the third. If I pivot the other way, there's my there's my E bar chord going to the E minor on the right. So so it's fun to just pivot around that that E. I'm just pivoting around this. I'm targeting this E and just pivoting around it, going from playing it this way and then playing it this way, playing the the root and the third, and then possibly picking up fifth down here so that's another way uh, that we can we can start to noodle around with that we can then target something other than the root note of course so we could say what if i wanted to target the uh the g so our g's we know are going to be here and here so I'll pick up the yellows so that's going to be here's a g Oop, that's not a g Here's a G and here's a G. So if I'm playing over here, so there's I'm ending on a G, and then I can go back if I want. There's a G. There's back to my E. There's my E. There's a G power chord which is G and D. There's a G. And there's ending off on that, on that E minor. So you can target a B. So remember the B is outside of your, outside of your pentatonic scale. So if you're thinking about this in pentatonic, you could, then you can add the B to your pentatonic. You're like, okay, there's my pentatonic. But I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the B, which is right there. Back to an E. I'm looking. There's my B. Here's that E down here. So I haven't, I didn't really target this. I haven't been really targeting this E uh, minor shape down here. 
so you can end it on that. So I'm hitting my B's and then going back to that, to this shape, which is like my D minor split up to here. There's my E minor. So then you could do that. You could you could target like an A, right? And say that's not in my chord, but I can still it's in my scale, both pentatonic and major. So I can be like, there's my A, E minor, A, power chord, E minor, A. minor with that inverted E minor here so you can start to go back and forth between those and in, in open position and and um, up top so there's going to be that one and then the next question will typically be well what if I don't want to play in all the chords in C but but if I was switching from a C to an E and I don't want to be in Phrygian meaning if I'm up here it's like okay I can see the chord in here but what if I wanted to noodle around it in the notes that are in the key of E minor as I'm switching to E minor, instead of the E minor being surrounded by the key or the notes that are in the key of C. Remember that these three notes are gonna be in both the key of C pentatonic major or major shape and in the E minor shape because, because these three notes are in both shapes. But if I wanted to play notes around it as I move from chord C to E or whatever that are in E minor shape, that's when the rest of the shape will be different, right? So how can I get to an E uh, minor basically shape? Well, we know that this shape is, this is the minor side, this is the major side. So if I looked at that minor side and I just moved to the guitar where I have that string as the minor, I put my pointer there, it would be on the nut, right? It's the open string. So I can move this whole shape back and I can, and then I can play this whole shape in the open position. And then I would be basically converting my mind to now be playing, you know, in E minor. So I can noodle around when I go to the E chord in E minor. The other way you might see it is you might say, well, if this is my, minor side and my major side i where's my related e is, is there's an e right there so what if i like moved this shape and i started to play it like like on that e as though that was the top shape right you could start to think of it like that like i'm going to play it from here but i'm going to play this shape there right and i'm going to go okay and then i'm going to play it like this shape down below it i don't even know what i'm playing but i'm going to say if that was the first this one's going to go under it and then this one's going to go like here but then i run into the kink in the guitar so i'd have to shift this like up right and so you so you can kind of start to build it that way in your mind and start to kind of jigsaw this stuff together but we'll get more into that uh, later i just want to point that out for now let's let me show you that in a little bit more detail just so you can see that so I'm going to say, let's say, show the ribbon and we're going to go down, down here. So I'm going to unhide between I and AK, unhide, and then between uh, 129 and 143, right click and unhide. And then I'm going to look for the relative major. I'm, I'm not going to get into detail on how to do it right now, but I'm just going to tell you it's an 11 or G. So if I look at a G major, that gives me the six, which is the minor. By the way, yeah, I know that because uh, these are really common. The E minor, really common to play in the guitar and it's relative major. The guitar is friendly to that because of the open notes on the guitar, as well as A major and it's related, you know, I mean, sorry, A minor <laughs> and C major, right? Those are pretty common guitar uh friendly chords or scales so there is that and then i'm going to unhide between a s and d e right click and unhide okay and then i'm going to go to the right and let's hide from fret 12 on over to 
to here, right click and hide. And then I'm gonna hide from AT to the minor, to the minor, right click and hide. And so we can see now we've got, uh, we've got then the E here that we're focused in on, mind the right one. We've got the E that we're focused on. Okay, so I'm gonna then pull all this stuff off. Du, 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 du. And then we have, I'm gonna copy this. We can see it as playing around, uh, playing around the six of the G major or the relative minor would make it basically the one over here. I'm going to format that, format, paint that over here. So let's do that. You can see that either way. And then let's, I'm going to then change this whole thing. I'm going to go do, let's remove the formatting first, clear the rules, clear the rules. And then I'll just add everything first in blue. So I'm just going to make everything blue to start out with. Da, 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 da. And then here, it's going to be the A is going to be blue. And then the B is going to be blue. And then the C is going to be blue. And then the D is going to be blue. Oh, wait a sec. I didn't do it. And then the D is going to be blue. And da, da, da. and then we're going to say the E. Let's start off with it blue. Custom blue 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 and then this one is going to be blue f sharp is going to be blue okay and then i can highlight these ones and i'm going to make this one the e's are going to be green and then the g is going to be red and then the B is going to be yellow. And I couldn't figure out why these rules change. I'm going to copy these rules here because these rules pulled in from somewhere else. That's what was confusing me before. I'm just going to cut just to make sure I've got my right rules here. Okay. So then, so now if I, if I say my position in E then, is still going to show here. So there's my E minor, same shape that we saw before, basically like a bar chord uh, kind of shape. Da, 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 da. And we still see like the E fitting over here. Here's the shape on the top, which is probably like my most common way to play it over here. So it still fits, of course, but now the notes around it will be different. So if I was just to demonstrate that, if we go up top and we hide from here to here, right click. No, that's from here to here, right click and hide. Then we can see here that that up top, you know, we still have this shape, the E kind of shape that we were playing in this position. That's one way you can play uh, the, the, the E minor up top. It still fits, of course, but the notes around it are different. So you can see this one isn't exactly the same as the bottom one here, right? So we have a different... So, so when you're kind of noodling around, you want to keep in your mind and say, okay, what am I doing here? Am I playing, am I making the E the root? And then am I still playing like I'm in the key of C, which means I'm basically centering around the E, which means uh, that I'm playing a mode of 
the key of C, or am I switching my mind to say now I'm in the key of E minor, which is relative to its major of uh, the G major, and, and then I'd be playing in E minor, in which case the chords will fit in either one, but if I'm noodling around outside of it in the scale around it, then that'll be different depending on, on, on those two differences. Now, if I look at this, so, so this position is our C position. If I look up here then, uh, what is that position? Well, it's related uh, to the G major, or in other words, like if I went over here to where we looked at the G major, and we saw that the G major has that shape in it that we could label as a D uh, type of position. So one way we could label that shape is usually with the relative major shape, right? We don't usually label it by the minor shape, but I can say, well, if I'm looking at an E, the, the relative major would be a G, and then the G shape looks like has that D in it. So we could basically call this shape, we could say, well, that's the D shape. So remember the D means if, I, if I'm looking at the D on the guitar, uh, we're not talking about the D minor, but the D major, which has that kind of triangle shape to it. So it would look, you know, like this, da, 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 da. And so when you move that up, you can try to define your pentatonic shapes by that targeting mechanism. In other words, you could say, I'm going to say these three notes is going to target the pentatonic scale around it. And then I'm going to target around that is going to be the whole major scale. Now, remember, you can't just use those three notes just to to fit inside the major scale because it'll fit in multiple different major scale positions, but it will be unique to uh, the pentatonic scale. So that's why you could use that as a naming mechanism. I would call it uh, position number three. And how does that work? We'll talk about that uh, more later. But if I, when we went to this overview tab, remember that we're starting on what I would call position one, which is that fret five position. That's the one we're looking at here. And then if I go to position number two, this is going to be the connected position number two. And then this is going to be the uh, position number three, which is what I would call that uh, D position. Now, this is all mapped out in the key of C. So you can see that triangle here uh, in the D position. I usually kind of recognize things not so much by seeing that triangle shape, although I'm getting better at doing that. But I kind of see just the pattern of these patterns on, on a string by string, like these two, this grouping right here is one thing that kind of gives things away. And you can see these groupings, the, 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 the pairs of strings will, will kind of clump together. That's usually what I see first, but a lot of people see these shapes first because that's what they visualize when they're doing the open position. And if that's a good targeting method, it is for a lot of people then you can use that targeting method, which will help you to kind of visualize where you are on the fretboard. Let's unhide here and just get back to uh, what we had before. Right click and unhide. And then I'm just going to hide all of the, I'm going to scroll back a bit just so we can get ready for next time. Prep for the next one. Right click, hide. And then I'm going to go down here. And so do, 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 right click and hide. And then down here do, 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 to here, right click and hide. It's just like when you, when you clean up, I had to clean up at the, when I worked at the, at a, at a deli shop or something, I had, you got the, the night shift has to clean up for the morning shift hide. And that's how, so you have, you can't just leave it a mess. You know, you have to clean the place. And then we're going to right click and unhide here. And then I'll hide it down to uh, fret number eight, right click and hide. And so next time we'll move on uh, to, I think the A minor is what we're on. Let's zoom in a bit. Do I really need all of these yellow squares down here? I feel like I have an excess amount of squares, but that's okay. We'll continue on next time.